All right. Welcome everybody to this TechSoup sponsored webinar. Today, our title is online fundraising for your nonprofit with three people here that's gonna give you some fabulous tips. Um, one of them, actually two of them, our partner, New Relic and Zoom. And then we have Pledge here. You're gonna walk away with so many jewels from Pledge. I promise you, you are in the right place today. Don't log off. If you log off, you'll get the replay. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. If this is your first time here at TechSoup, let me show you how you can engage today. You already turned on the Q&A feature. I've seen somebody type in the Q&A. We would love for you to type in your courses in the Q&A, but we know some people will type them in the chat. That's okay. We'll try to grab them and answer all your questions. Um, you've already turned on the CC button. I saw that earlier. If you need the closed caption, just tap on closed caption here at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We're going to email this within 48 hours, the slides and the video replay. You may get it later on today. And if you hear something cool, which I know you will, go ahead and share it on social media and make sure you tag us at hashtag text So I'm going to turn this over to Holly and get out of the way. You guys have a great webinar. Take it over, Holly. Hello, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. I um, am about to share my screen and get us started. Uh, can I see a thumbs up if everyone can see my screen? A okay. Yay, we're off to the races. Welcome to today's online uh, fundraising for your nonprofit webinar. I am Holly from uh, New Relic, and we are going to get started. So for the next probably 45 minutes or so, we'll give you a very quick intro so you know who we are and what we do. But uh, then we're going to get right into talking to James, our guest speaker today from Pledge. And he is going to tell us all about Pr Pledge, give us a quick demo, and then we're going to spend a lot of time asking him all the questions that you have about online fundraising. He is your ticket to taking your campaign to the next level. Alrighty. As you can see, I love, I love oceans and marine life, and it's good to good to see some free little animals floating around. Okay, but before we get started, we have a giveaway. Um, we actually have three giveaways. The first is uh, a, we're going to give a 250 donation to your favorite nonprofit. So all you have to do to enter is Nicole is going to put the link in the chat. Um, we just need your name and your email and your consent. And you go in to win either the $250 donation to your no favorite nonprofit. We will also be giving away two free consultation sessions with, with James, um, myself, and also Nicole from Zoom. We work all day, every day with amazing nonprofits, and we want to help you guys and, and sort of share all the knowledge that we have. So all you've got to do is hit that link in the chat, and I will announce the winners in about 30 minutes or so. Okay, so I'll quickly introduce myself. Hi, I am Polly. I work in the New Relic Social Impact Team, and uh, my, de my day job is I spend um, a lot of time doing technical training and enablement for our nonprofit customers exclusively. I make sure that our nonprofits understand how to get data into New Relic and look at their website and make sure that there aren't any vulnerabilities or bugs or errors that could maybe make that their site go down. I'll hand it over for Nicole to say hi. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Nicole Gray. I am part of the Zoom Cares team. I'm over our product pillar, and I'm over our in-kind donation and discount program, and ultimately over our go-to market strategy. And I will now hand it over to James so he can introduce himself. Hey, everyone. I'm so honored to be here with over 600 incredible nonprofits joining us from around the world. So, and with incredible speakers, Nicole and Holly, and thank you TechSoup as well. So I'm James, I'm the CEO of Pledge. You'll hear more about us, but we've had the incredible fortune of raising money now for over 40,000 nonprofits around the world. And we'll tell you more in a minute. All righty. Okay, over to Nicole, so we can hear a little bit more about what Zoom Cares uh, is up to. Thank you, Holly. So real quick, I just want to introduce my team. As you can see, like a lot of you all out there who are listening, we are small and mighty. 
uh, but we do a lot to make things happen. So I do want to give a quick shout out because I know a lot of them are listening um, today. So thank you to Tilly and Holly, Erica and Casey for joining today. And also, like I said, for making things happen. And as you can see, we focus on three areas with social equity being at the heart. But really what we're really passionate about is that we partner with organizations that are led by BIPOC and LGBTQ communities, underrepresented communities. So that's what we're really passionate about. And we do that by utilizing our three Ps. So I'd already talked about product, but we also have philanthropy and people. So Erica is over philanthropy and Tilly is over people. So Zoom leads with care and we are proud to be named Zoom Cares. And that is us, that's our Zoom Cares team. So with that, I'm now gonna turn it over to Holly. So she could talk a little bit more about New Relic before we get to James. Great. Thank you, Nicole. So as I quickly mentioned before, I work in the New Relic social impact team and um, I work specifically in the observability for good team. And uh, we we also have a nonprofit uh, discounted product program where we give away New Relic for free. We also do the technical enablement and training for free. And New Relic is essentially a engineering tool for your web developers to make sure that they are fixing bugs and pesty kind of problems before a site goes down. So it's really important to have New Relic running in um, the back end for your developers so that donation page doesn't go down during a peak event perhaps 21 days of goodness um, or a peak campaign, we make sure that your site is up and running and thriving so um, developers can can focus on actually building uh, products and features and not you know fixing pesty errors. I am going to now hand it over to James to talk about what is Pledge. So at Pledge, our mission is to power generosity. And the way we do that is by building the world's most innovative charitable fundraising platform. You can see some of the awards that we were been fortunate to receive, world's most innovative company, real leaders award. And it's all because our core mission is how can we literally raise as much money as possible for nonprofits like everyone here on the line. Go to the next slide. So one thing we're really proud about, and it may be news to many folks on the line, is a handful of months ago when we were studying all the data around donations because we're we're literally constantly all day every day we're processing over 10,000 donations a day we're looking at how do we raise more and more money for nonprofits we started studying the data and we realized that literally 3% of every single donation goes to a credit card company so if a donor is giving $100 to your nonprofit you're typically only getting 96 97 and so recently, literally a handful of months ago, we said Pledge is going to start paying all the credit card fees. And we call this free the fee. So now um, for any nonprofits, we encourage you to try out the platform. Again, it's 100 percent free. Now we are paying all the credit card fees. So 100 percent of every single dollar goes to you and your organization. And just how do nonprofits work with us? And I'm going to show you a demo in a few minutes, as well as, you know, our goal today, Nicole, Holly, and I, is really to, sh to shine a light on some really interesting best practices, the data, some stuff that you might not have access to because it's all proprietary and data that we've seen across tens and tens of millions of donations. But here's a handful of ways that nonprofits are using us. So a lot of nonprofits use us to launch their recurring giving program. Many are using us for virtual and hybrid events. And we're going to show you this incredible app we built with Zoom, where you can actually fundraise in Zoom, and we're going to do it literally in five minutes. A lot of nonprofits use it for text to donate, um, fundraiser pages and donation forms. And here's a great quote from Miri, incredible nonprofit that's helping resettling refugee families in, in the US who started who moved to pledge because of the credit card fees. And because of that, now that we pay these credit card fees, she can serve thousands of more refugee families. All right, there are four key best practices and we wanna encourage everyone tuning in wherever you are. If you have a question, you're like, what does this mean? Or, or tell me more, or, give me a case study, whatever. Please just drop it in the chat. We're gonna to try to get to as many of these questions as possible. And if we can't get them today, we're gonna to send out obviously information and we'll have future webinars as well. All right, best practice number one, it is all about impact. Today's donors 
really are super data driven and they want to understand whether they're giving ten dollars a thousand dollars or more what is the impact of that donation when i give it to you so let's go to the next slide and i'm going to show you an example how i do just you do have this? actually james that's such a great point i have a quick question so oh, sure. i'm like i'm on a team i'm building a, a online fundraising campaign how do i figure out impact how do i yep. know how to figure that out it's a great question and this is something that I think every nonprofit needs to do in today's in today's world is how do you break down the unit impact of what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? And some nonprofits are really good about this and it's core to what they've been doing for a long time. So One Tree Plan, I'll give you an example. When you give a dollar to One Tree Plan, they tell you literally for that dollar, this is where we're planting the tree in this forest, in this area, and here's a GPS coordinates. Let's say you're a disaster relief organization. We worked with the Red Cross on this because they had actually never done this kind of thing. They realized in Southern California, they needed to actually buy an emergency response vehicle to help, help respond. And what they did was they, they said, okay, that response vehicle, I'm just use hypothetically, is $40,000. So if you're donating to this restricted fund, this is, this is literally your dollars are going to provide care to families who will be served by this, by this response vehicle. So it's really, really important. And nonprofits think this way because in that donation form, in that moment of impact, when someone feels compelled to give, when they know where their money is going, they're going to be at least two times more likely to give. That's awesome. That's incredible. And by the way, this is not just, sometimes you might communicate this in person. Let's go to the next slide, Holly. Let me show you how do you do this on the donation form. So you're on your website, right? And this is a this is a campaign that we run for No Kid Hungry. Um, but believe it or not, oh, last year has raised money for a billion meals. Um, the mission of No Kid Hungry is to make sure one out of one out of three kids in America literally lives food insecure or hungry, right? So their mission is to help solve this issue. Well, if you tell if you tell a donor, hey, everyone feels empathy for kids, right? But if you tell them give $10 versus if you give $10, you're going to provide a hundred meals immediately by connecting it to that impact. You're going to see at least a 2% or two times conversion, right? So here in this, um, that's a snapshot of the donation form. And by the way, you can go see this. This is turnup.org in the, in the wild, if you're interested in seeing it. So next to the actual dollar amount, you see there 50, $50 that provides 500 meals right you literally see that so that donor knows okay i'm giving i'm giving 50 bucks but i'm actually providing 500 meals and then following up you know after the donation they get their donation receipt this is a perfect time to send them a piece of content that says you know thank you so much here's an example of one of the the food banks where the you know the, the food is going to be delivered or a family that's been that's been impacted All right, the world changed over the last few years. No one is no, knows this better than Nicole. We've all lived through it, but she has helped fuel this world changing, this, this new reality of this hybrid virtual world that we live in. But the best practice number two is you have to meet donors where they are, right? Back in the old days, let's say pre-COVID, which seems like, was that 100 years ago? Was that 10 years ago? I don't know. It feels like 10 years ago. It feels like a different lifetime. Um, we would all say as nonprofits, oh, let's meet at the gala. That doesn't exist anymore. You have to meet donors where they are, whether it's on Zoom, whether it's a, a birthday party where someone's donating in lieu of gifts to your nonprofit. Super important. And the experience has got to be easy. So James, it's funny that you're saying that because, you know, we talk about this all the time and, and, and like you said, because we're all feeling it, right? So nonprofits were obviously rocked by the pandemic. I mean, we talk about this. I mean, working at Zoom, we were rocked by the pandemic. Um, I feel like I'm 76 years old because of the pandemic. I'm sure a lot of us are feeling like that, right? So how has the game changed because of the pandemic? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Absolutely. Everything changed and it dramatically changed for pledge as well. Yeah. So I'll, I'll never forget April of 2020. I think mid March is when we sent everyone home. We were in an office. Most people in, in our company were in an office. Um, and we saw this stat that just blew our minds. 
Washington Post came with an article that said one out of three nonprofits in America is going to shut during COVID. If they're not doing something in COVID relief, it's over because half of nonprofits and and everyone on the line probably knows this, but nine out of 10 nonprofits are small nonprofits under 10 million in budget a year, right? And half of their funding usually comes from in-person events. Well, what if we can't get together? What if we can't have a gala or a lunch and learn or a golf tournament? What do you do? So at Pledge, because of our mission, we all got together and, you know, I get to uh, talk about it, but I have the most incredible mission-driven team of developers, marketers, marketers, philanthropists, who all said, we have to reinvent giving. Because if giving is just going to an event and raising your paddle, we're in trouble. If one out of three nonprofits goes out of business in, in the US, that's the heart of America and the world, right? So we, we realized we had to build something that made it easy for people to fundraise, not just online, but virtually. And we're gonna show you what we built. Let's go to the next slide. So very quickly, and even in humanity's darkest hour, at least in my lifetime, COVID, we saw this beautiful outpouring of, of support started on Twitch, right? People were doing Twitch fundraisers and started using Pledge. We saw YouTube, we did Tiger Woods Poker Tournament raised a million dollars um, for COVID relief. We just saw this incredible, everyone rallied, the world rallied to virtual, but there wasn't an easy donate button. We reached out to Zoom. And Zoom said, and, and I love this, you see this with Nicole's background, Zoom cares, their core value of care. We reached them, we reached them and said, hey, you're connecting hundreds of million people. Why isn't there a donate button on Zoom? And Zoom said, that's a great idea. Why don't you guys go build that and we will help launch that together. So that's what I'm gonna show you real quick. Um, so everyone who's, who's tuning in right now and everyone who gets recording afterwards, we're all on Zoom webinar. This works on Zoom meetings and Zoom webinar. So I'm going to share my screen. So you're going to see what it looks like. And by the way, 100% free, super easy to do um, to launch this. Um, so now All right, I'm going to I screen sharing. sharing. While All you're good. doing that, we did have a couple of quick questions just back yeah, against yeah. Uh, the impact, uh, which I do think is like, you know, it's a really big area. So Dr. Joe uh, Mitika asked, are all impacts the same regardless of what they fund? How do you appeal to multi-donors that you are applying to? Yeah, that is, a, that is a great question. Well, at the core, you know your mission. Um, and, you know, all, all quantified impacts will raise the bar in terms of your, of your donation. Certain donors, let's say higher, higher dollar amount donors, might be looking for a different kind of thing versus your recurring, your smaller donors. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But the okay. first thing is to quantify that impact and then make it super transparent. You may find, you know, uh, I'll give a, a conservation example. For $10,000, um, you can actually fund a forest. You could literally reforest. There was horrible wildfires here in Southern California several years ago, and $10,000 literally reforest an entire area over several years. That's different from, I wanna get, I wanna plant 10 trees in honor of someone. So oh. um, you can customize the impacts based on the amount. Got it, all righty. Uh, and then James have another question. Uh, if you're paying the 3% credit card fee, then the money is coming out of your gross receipts. And this is uh, anonymous attendee. How do your fees compare to your two major competitors in this tier? Yeah. And we have uh, one other quick question for James to close uh, a uh, close your little thing so we can see you. Close right. your little, uh, little. Can you guys alert. see my screen? By the way, yeah. we can. Yep. Okay, fabulous. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show the um, the Zoom app in James. one second, but let me answer the the fees question. Sure. So when I launched into when I launched Pledge, um, I'm a I like to call it recovering for profit entrepreneur who built a few tech companies before, and the last one, um, a small little nonprofit by, by the name of Crisis Text Line reached out to me. At the time I was running a, a fairly sizable text messaging company, and we were sending out billions of text messages. And I wanna give this 
perspective so everyone knows a little bit more about Pledge and, and me Hey, James, as well. sorry to interrupt, but yeah, um, sure. can you close your little uh, alerts, like on the little, yep, so we can see, yep, close that one oh, okay. and close, you are cooking with gas. We can see you. Perfect. This little nonprofit reached out to me and I was running, a, like I said, this for-profit tech company and they launched a real-time suicide prevention hotline via text messaging through my service. And I saw literally the power of text messaging and technology to change and save lives. And at that moment, is now a little over seven years ago, I realized for me personally, as someone who loves to build and create tech, if you can build tech for good and save lives, like that is to me the greatest thing ever. So hence that will lead me to, to start and launch Pledge. And when it comes back to fees, I think it's wrong that there's huge fees out there. Nonprofits used to get charged thousands of dollars a month for software to process a donation. That felt wrong. So at Pledge, we've gone through a few different um, changes in the business model. At first, people used to take 10% out of a donation. We started with like, let's take three, let's take the least amount possible. And then we're like, well, what if we take none? Could we even build a business model that basically gives 100% of every single dollar to a nonprofit and sustain a company and a tech company built on that? And we did that by going, let's make our business model 100% in alignment with every nonprofit and every single donor. And I'm going to show you the experience in a minute. But when you give via pledge, 100% of your dollars go to the nonprofit. And if you love the service, you can leave a little tip to us, a dollar, three dollars, etc. And it's 100% optional. So if some people leave a tip, some people don't. It's a business model built on the generosity of humanity. And at scale, you know, tens of thousands of, of donations, well, millions of donations, 10,000 plus a day, and almost 100 million of impact, it's working. All right. Well, let's, let's so, get to it. Let's go it. Yeah, let's see it. All right, let's it. go. Yeah. Okay. So you guys see my screen. What I did in the bottom right-hand corner, you see a little apps button that I clicked on, and it popped up um, in that apps button. You can add a new app. This is, it's called the Zoom Marketplace. There's a bunch of apps in there. There's only one donation app and it's the best thing in the world. Totally biased. If you just search for pledge or donate, you'll see this and you can create a fundraiser. Now we have 2 million nonprofits in here. So every single nonprofit in the US, Australia, England, um, Canada, and about 500,000 nonprofits around the world that have all been independently verified as equivalent to a US nonprofit or in the database. So I'm gonna do something. There's devastation in Maui um, to where my wife and I got in, in, engaged yesterday. So I'm gonna do a quick fundraiser for Maui Relief and just show you how it works. Um, and pray for everyone in Maui, of course. So if you saw here, I just clicked search for a nonprofit. I just grabbed the Maui Humane Society. Allison, I pray you and your loved ones are safe. Um, and if there's anything we can do, thank, thank you so much for tuning in. Please let us know. All of yeah, us you, are here to you, support Allison, you. Thank you, for just joining today. So thank you for that. Yeah, Allison, what nonprofit are you a part of? You can type it in the chat. And uh, she's typing protect and preserve Hawaii. Nice. Hawaii. All right. You are now going to be the beneficiary of donations today. Okay, so I create a goal, um, and I this is a URL basically that anyone can go to before and after the um, the Zoom meeting. So this, by the way, you can now fundraise on any Zoom meeting with your constituents, with corporate partners, anything. You can create a text to donate um, keyword. So this makes it super easy for people on mobile. I'm just going to do Maui Relief, and then you can thank donors with virtual background. So when we created this, I mentioned how virtual was the only way we could fundraise. And we were kind of thinking, and my team had this brilliant idea, you know, Zoom feels so connected. We all see each other, right? Um, versus Twitch and YouTube, where you don't see, you just see the stars, right? And when you go to a gala, people raise their hands, and you're in a room, and sometimes there's there's drinks and people just feel connected. How do you replicate that same vibe? Well, we did this through a custom virtual background. So when anyone donates, 
they get a special background, a memento that they were there and feel a part of it. So I'm going to choose a background. You can choose any category you want or upload your own. And I'm going to upload one. Okay, don't have one. I'm gonna up. I'm not gonna upload one right now. I'm gonna create one from the library here. Um, all right. So my fundraiser's been created. Okay, and what you guys see on the screen on the right, this is what you'd see as the host. Okay, and you can do a donations overlay. So here is my overlay. Um, this makes it so easy in real time. Literally, people can see as soon as someone makes a donation, they're going to see this. OK, Kathy, how do I use Pledge within Zoom? Um, good question. So you're literally going to go in the bottom right hand corner of your Zoom. There's an apps button. You're going to click on that. And then you're going to search for pledge or donate or donations. And it'll pop up this app that's free and then just pops open into the screen like this. Okay. We have so another click... quest, quick question sure. coming in. Do we receive contact information for donors through Pledge Zoom? Absolutely. 100% of every single piece of data from that consumer comes directly to your nonprofit in, in what we call the impact hub, which is basically the dashboard for donor data that you can then put in your CRM platform. You can download in CSV however you want it. The only exception is if the donor says they want to be anonymous. And a lot of nonprofits, they they ask us, oh, can we get rid of the anonymous tag? Um, there's a lot of reasons. There's GDPR. There's some uh, reasons if you're raising money from around the world, why you, why you need to have the ability to protect anonymity. And in regions where you don't, our recommendation, by the way, is to keep anonymous in there because when we take it out, versus keep it on, you typically see 11% lift in donations when you have anonymous. All right, another quick question from Dawn. Is there a specific contact at Pledge to set up a donation fundraiser? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll send, you can send do them. this all on your own, by the way. So if you just go to pledge.to, um, and we'll drop a link in chat. You can do this all on your own. You can also go to the Zoom Marketplace and set up the set up the Zoom app. Let me walk you through the donation experience real quick so you, everyone can see it. Because um, and big big shout out to the Zoom team because uh, they did they worked some of their magic superpowers over the last week. So now in Zoom you can fundraise with a credit card. If everyone can see here, you can donate through credit card. You can donate through PayPal. You can donate through Venmo. As y'all know, young donors, the way they the way they keep all their money is in Venmo these days. So now you can donate in Venmo. You can also donate crypto. And I'm going to talk about this in a minute, but we support 150 different currencies. So if someone has Bitcoin, ETH, et cetera. They can all donate that now literally to your nonprofit in seconds. And I'm going to make a donation real quick here. Yeah. And while you're doing that, James, again, thank you to Ross Mayfield, who's a head of product for ZoomAss, who's actually on this webinar. So thank you, Ross, and your team. And James, do me a favor, make your screen bigger because now you're the host. And so we see everything on your screen, um, your chat and everything. So if you could slide, whatever, there you go. Um, if, oh, look at the rays. All right. Beautiful. So I have now, if you saw, I just made a donation um, and it literally just um, popped up here. I raised $100. Um, so $50 is, is going to our uh, protect, protect Maui relief. Um, so thank you so much for being here. You see James just made a donation. Someone anonymously just made a $10 donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I also featured um, the fundraiser and when you click feature the fundraiser everyone here on zoom just got a link so that you can literally just now see um the donate button and you can donate just like that as well and that's how you donate on zoom that is so amazing i really think this is going to really change the way 
Um, we can fundraise online. Um, thank you. All righty. Yeah, I will absolutely. go back to these slides. Um, um, while you're doing that, uh, James, what about, we have a question. What about privacy protection or donor, donor data? Um, and also PCI compliance. Mm -hmm. These are these are great questions. So our payment processor is Stripe, which is a level one certified payment processor, use the highest bits of encryption. We do not store any credit card data. Um, so none of that stuff, everything is, is encrypted to the highest standard. So you don't have to worry when you use Pledge, you don't have to worry about storing credit card data and any exposure in that regard. Everything is anonymized and tokenized okay. and we use a payment processor that has pci compliance and is level one certified okay and then curtis um reached out he has a really great question isn't a nonprofit required to obtain state solicitation licenses to receive donations uh that that's a great question it depends on how they solicit um okay. so at pledge and the pledging foundation the way that we raise money um is all the funds that get processed by pledge go into the Pledgeling Foundation, which is a 501c3 donor advised fund, and which has all of the state certifications. Um, there's a 35 to 37 states that require solicitation, you know, require solicitations. Um, and so we do that as a fundraising platform on behalf of all of our partners. So anyone who works with pledge has all those certifications in place. But definitely when nonprofits are thinking about doing various corporate partnerships, and let's say a company is going out to fundraise for them on their behalf, then definitely those companies need to think through the certifications as well as the nonprofit. Okay. And then um, without knowing it, James, Laura Norman Tyson is setting you up for the next conversation. She wanted to know about donation of stocks. And I know that's what we're moving into. So. All right. Great. Thank you, Laura. And thank you, Curtis, for those questions as well. Thank you. Keep the questions coming, guys. We'd love to hear what you're thinking. We want to answer as many questions as possible. And if you don't get your question answered, don't worry. We can we will all we can follow up with you too. So best practice number three is we're totally living in a subscription world. Everything is moved this way, right? From Netflix to Every different piece of content out there is subscription. E-commerce is moving to su subscription. The same thing is true with donors, right? So in the past, a handful of years ago, everyone was trying to get the, the big ticket donor to the gala and to get small donors on a one-off donation. The most important thing, particularly for younger donors, is a great subscription program. Let's go to the next, next slide with some of the great data about this. So this is data anonymized across, like I said, millions and millions of transactions um, at pledge and about 100 million in impact. So the lifetime value, which means like how long you keep that donor is up to eight times higher for a subscription donor than a one-time donor. Think about that. So the, the average online donation, depending on the, the vertical you're in and you know your ask is, on average around $150 versus the subscription, that recurring donor is around $1,000. So- Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. So how do you differentiate between, like say I want to, I want to start a subscription uh, campaign. I've been doing one-off kind of drives and campaigns, but how do I think about like starting off from a subscription when I've just been doing these one-off kind of campaigns? Yep, it's a, it's a great question. So we always advise our partners and where we see the biggest success is to really treat this, and some people call them recurring giving programs, some call them sustainer programs, treat this, these folks like they're part of an insider club. Brand this group, create a special don donation form, a special landing page on your website, make them feel like they are really a part of something. Don't just give them the same experience that they might give if they gave you a hundred dollar donation. That's how you drive incredible loyalty. So I'll give you a few examples of folks who do an incredible job of it. Here I'm showing Worthy of Love. It's one of my favorite nonprofits though. I love them all. Some one that's very close to our heart because we do a ton of volunteering with them. 
So they're a nonprofit that's that's helping kids experiencing homelessness in Southern California and in Houston have birthday parties because kids experiencing homelessness may not ever get a birthday party, may not even get a birthday present on their birthday, right? So this incredible organization literally throws these unbelievable birthday parties for all kids in a shelter or in a neighborhood. Um, and so they launched something called the birthday club. And when you join the birthday club, literally for every $20 that you you give, you're supporting one kid. And you really feel like you're a part of it. Their, their content's incredible. And you just know your impact. It's so powerful. I want to flag two resources here. Dear friends of ours, um, who are some of the, I think, the best thought leaders. There's a bunch of nonprofit influences out there. But Dana Snyder uh, runs an incredible recurring giving um, a program where she helps advise folks on how to do this. And then Vic Harrison, co-founder of Cherry Water, Scott Harrison's wife. Um, if you don't know her, she's one of the most brilliant brand minds in, in the space as well. She's always advocating giving best tips and practices around recurring giving as well. So I highly recommend checking them the two of them out as well. Great. Thank you. Going. Let's go to stock and stock donations yes so this crypto. this blew my mind um to see the data and the volume of transactions coming from non-cash assets so trend number four donations today are increasingly non-cash donors i mentioned earlier you have to meet donors where they are whether they're on zoom whether they want to come back you know we have schools and universities on the line they want to come back once a year for the alumni event well you got to reach them whether it's mail which is not really the best way anymore um you got to meet them wherever they are the same thing is true about their assets okay so crypto stock dafs daf stands for donor advice fund these are really important. And I want to just talk for 30 seconds about the tax advantages, because this is a big thing for nonprofits as well. So if you're talking to a donor who, let's say, wants to give a big gift, let's say it's a $5,000 gift, right? If they give from Bitcoin versus cash, they might have a huge tax incentive. And the reason is, the way that the, in the US this is, the tax code is written, Crypto and stocks are treated like assets. So if that donor, let's say, bought Bitcoin at $1,000, right? They're going to actually get a write-off when they give you $5,000 of Bitcoin for $5,000, even though they only paid $1,000 for it. So it's a, they're going to make, there's a better tax benefit for them to give stock and crypto than actually cash. And the reality in America in particular is most consumers in America actually have more assets tied up in non historically non liquid assets like crypto and stock than just cash. But James, I thought crypto had lost a lot of its value as far as it being yep. like bad for the environment and consumption and all that. So can you talk a little yep. bit about that? Absolutely. You're you're exactly right. The crypto is it's gone up and down. Um, yeah. I have uh, several of my employees who are or very long crypto and they're big believers. Um, but it's it's been a wild ride. But what's been fascinating, I have to tell you, is last year when the crypto went down, we saw crypto donations drop, but crypto donors were still donating. In the last two months, you know, I'll give an example. Literally two weeks ago, I always love to look at the donations going through the platform and I'm just always studying the data. We had an $80,000 donation went to save the children in Finland out of nowhere, process, processed in a minute. So we see as crypto continues to, to, to grow as just an asset that people feel comfortable with because of its tax advantages and because the crypto community is really, really in many ways, very philanthropic and cares so much about ecosystem, they're donating more and more crypto versus cash. The other thing that we did at Pledge is we realized there, there are energy consumption issues with mining Bitcoin in particular. That's the most energy intensive cryptocurrency. So pledge a year ago, we decided we have to make sure that every nonprofit, because we heard from so many nonprofits who said, we want to accept crypto, but we're worried about our donors saying it's not environmentally friendly. And we're like, we're an environmental nonprofit. How can we accept it? So at pledge, we literally offset 
all of the um, the carbon emissions from from a crypto transaction. So they are crypt they are carbon neutral transactions or carbon positive transactions if you donate crypto through pledge. Okay. Let's go to the next slide and let's talk about the data. Oh, thank you, Allison. Ooh, back one. Guys, I have to announce the winners, uh, but let's keep talking about uh, data while I go in and I get the winners. Okay. So while you pull up the winners, the data that I wanted to share um, is kind of crazy. The average crypto donation right now is over $5,000 and the average stock donation is over $5,000. So typically you are seeing donations that are coming from not cash are about 10 X more 10 to 20 times bigger than the average one-time donation. So highly recommend for all the nonprofits online, whether it's through pledge or someone else, definitely add stock and crypto as a seamless way for people to donate. And by the way, it's really easy now. So, Crypto donations and stock donations used to require the nonprofit to fill out all these forms with the IRS, um, sometimes receiving faxes. It was just really, really complicated, but there are easy ways to do that now, whether it's through pledge and whatnot or other partners where it's frictionless. All right, I see some more questions. Yeah, um, I have a question. Let's see. Uh, somebody says, how does a nonprofit use these non-cash assets? This is Christy Yen. Great question, Christy. So for now, what we've heard from nonprofits is they, they want the money, they want the, the crypto asset converted into, into their local currency. So that's what we do. So when we get like the Save the Children donation, um, the $80,000 donation, we literally will immediately turn it into local currency and disperse it to that nonprofit. So they get cash or Canadian dollars, whatever their local currency is, we send them the funds. Okay, guys, I'm question. back with our winners and then we can keep on going. I think we are running really well for time. Judy Reed, you are the lucky winner of the $250 donation to your favorite charity or nonprofit. Um, I will reach out to you and you can let me know uh, who you would like to donate the $250 to. And we have two winners for the $30, uh, sorry, the 30 minute uh, consultation session with James, with Nicole and with myself. The first winner is Laura Tyson. And the second winner is Allison Williams. I will put your names into the chat and I will definitely be reaching out to you guys today. Congratulations and thank you so much for, for joining us. I think we've got lots of other questions, so I'll just keep going to the. All right. Well, congratulations. Congrats all. A couple more questions I noticed, which were kind of good. Somebody asked about teams and whether pledge would be available for teams. Their, their company doesn't use Zoom. Mm -hmm. So we have um, something called pledge cam, which is a way, if you remember that little overlay that shows dynamically how much money is being raised and who's uh -huh. donating in, uh, in real time, we have something called pledge cam that works. If you support, it works on teams, it works on everything outside of zoom, the zoom functionality we think is, is, is the best because it has more bells and whistles, but pledge cam works perfectly on teams. And we've actually done teams fundraisers as well. It might, okay. be, it might be a little fuzzy on Teams, but it works better on, on Zoom. I'm just kidding. I'm teasing. I'm, teasing. <laughs> I'm, just, teasing. I'm just teasing. And and just a shout out, <laughs> Teams. Um, we see Teams used by a lot of corporate partners that we work with, and a lot of nonprofits. So, I just want to give one best practice that we've seen a ton is to make sure that. If you're doing a lunch and learn, you're doing a corporate part presentation, you're evangelizing your mission to a corporate partner, let's say on teams, make sure to, to do that ask, make sure to ask for a volunteering opportunity, because we see a lot of nonprofits now evangelizing themselves to corporate partners and using teams or zoom or whatnot, but don't forget to, to make that ask, try to encourage them to donate right then and there, because that's a great way to cultivate new donors, new volunteers, who ultimately might be your biggest supporters. 
Um, I think Jackie might have asked this question twice. I want to make sure Jackie Kaufman, um, thank you for asking this question. Can, sh can you explain the $5 payout? Mm, yes. Yeah, so that is the only fee that we charge at pledge that is not optional, um, which is, let's say $10,000 gets raised. We charge a $5 fee that just covers literally the check processing fee or the ACH fee to send the funds to you. Um, that's just to cover basically our cost. Um, and so every single month that you get donations through pledge, we disperse monthly to your nonprofit. And if you just connect and if you go to pledge .to slash, uh, pledge to slash nonprofits, you can set up your banking information so we can send you the money ACH. And in times of disaster, like right now, we're doing a big relief effort with CNN right now for, for Maori relief. Um, we will disperse in 24 hours, 48 hours. As soon as we collect the funds, we will disperse as fast as possible in times of need because that money we know is literally desperately, desperately needed. Um, Branch had a really good question. I think this is something that like always comes up in conversations that, that I've had with other nonprofits. James, just how do you drive donors to your online campaign? I mean, I'm sure that's like something that comes up all the time. Yeah, well, it's it's kind of amazing stat. Um, we live in this ADD society, right? Where we have, unfortunately, there's so we're starved for everyone's pulling at our attentions. Um, so right now, the average donor needs to be engaged with eight to twenty times if they're a first time donor. Which is think about that. Right, so that's like almost one a day, one time a day, even. Yeah. Now there are easy ways to do this, right? So let's say you engage with that first time donor, they got an email from you. You can retarget them through Facebook and YouTube and, you know, and ask your, ask your, your marketing team. They know it's a fairly simple way to make sure you're surrounding that donor in a variety of different ways to make sure that you, whether it's a, a hard engagement like an email or they see an ad or they see a, a pre-rolled piece of video content from you. Um, but that's one thing. The, the Probably the most powerful way that we've seen to move the needle from someone on the fence and then choosing to donate for that first time donor is oftentimes a matching campaign. So if you get a corporate sponsor, you know, let's say a, a, a bigger donor who really loves your organization, they're going to make a big gift. Can ask them if they'd be consider if they'd consider matching other donations, and that's a great way to double, you know, quickly double your impact. We have a nonprofit literally who's running a campaign. Just reached out to us yesterday, and they said they had a match, and we know that's going to really help them probably exceed their budget this year because they've got this big match opportunity. That's a great suggestion. Um, Kathy Dalton asked the question, I, I would want to see some of these data points sliced, <coughs> excuse me, by demographics. For example, some of our programs, our donor base is 70 plus. Yep. Well, I, I love that. Um, I love that question. So one stat that I love and uh, shout out to some of my developers who pulled this data, right, literally the last two days for this presentation. So I'm gonna give you some, some stats literally across all of our pledge um, customers. On mobile, and I used to think this would not happen. Um, and I remember we, we were the first platform to launch Apple Pay for Charity at a Red Cross gala several years ago, pre-COVID, where the average donor is over 50. One out of three donors at that event used Apple Pay. Right now, you know, number one thing, if you're if you're raising money online, you got to have Apple Pay. We're seeing literally half of all donations on mobile coming from Apple Pay. And that's regardless of of age demographic, because it's just so easy now. Right. And if you're on your phone, you've got your phone right here. You don't want to have to plug in your credit card, you know, and Apple Pay is about twice as much as Google Pay, even though Android is, is more bit ubiquitous. Um, Crypto, um, crypto and recurring giving um, will skew a slightly younger. Stock giving will definitely skew older. Um, so the average stock gift, you know, like I said, five thousand dollars, that's going to skew, you know, forty plus. 
and up. That makes sense. Yeah, obviously the increase in mobile and then obviously, you know, the Apple Wallet integration is just so seamless and easy. But yeah, 50% is insane. That is like shocking. Um, We have another question coming in uh, from anonymous attendee. Your site says there are no fees for the first $1,000. Then you charge fees. Is the $1,000 per transaction slash donation um, is it per the thousand dollars, or is it the total amount for the fundraiser? Oh, it it just means. Um, so, if someone gives a thousand dollars, let's say to your nonprofit through pledge, we are going to pay the three percent credit card fee. Um, if someone gives two thousand dollars, we can't pay that credit card fee yet. Um, at sixty dollars, <laughs> a lot of money, um, and we get a lot of over thousand dollar donations hopefully ultimately at some point we will cover all the credit card fees even if someone gives a hundred thousand dollar donation via credit card um but we don't charge any fees regardless the only thing is that credit card fee is going to come out if someone gives over a thousand dollar gift to your nonprofit through pledge okay um we've got lots of questions question. coming in so here we go from um <laughs> Melina Rosen, would the donations made be unrestricted grant to the organization as a default? Or is there a way to designate for a specific program or project included fiscally sponsored projects that one might be for fundraising? Yep. So we have thousands of fiscally sponsored organizations on the platform. For those who aren't familiar, let's say you're a new organization, you don't have your EIN, you can actually go partner with an existing with an existing fiscal sponsor who will give you you use their EIN and you can then fundraise. So we have <clears throat> we set up fiscal sponsored organizations all the time. If you go to pledge.to slash nonprofits and you're fiscally sponsored nonprofit, you can register and get set up. No problem. Um, you can also create restricted programs. We do them all the time. Many of our corporate partners. So we work with um, Warner Brothers Discovery. We've done fundraisers, obviously, with Zoom, Shopify. A lot of the brand partners we work with, separate from nonprofits, require all their funds to be restricted. You know, they want to go reforest this one area, um, maybe where they have an office and their their team is very close to. So yes, absolutely, we do a ton of restricted restricted giving. By default, we we keep things unrestricted unless it's a requirement for the nonprofit or the company or even the individual because unrestricted giving gives empowers the nonprofit to choose where the donation um where they can allocate the donation to have the maximum impact and we know every single one of you on the line knows exactly where to allocate your funds to best achieve your mission Mm -hmm. james here's an interesting question it comes from dallary um apologies if you cover this which i don't think we did so thank you dallary for this question can donors also give if they are watching a recording of the event or is it only giving in real time? Yep. So on the on the Zoom functionality, um, if you remember, and you'll, hopefully you'll see this in the recording, I created a URL and it's dynamically, it's basically a link to a fundraiser page. So if you're, if you're watching the live recording and it's just a, a video, obviously you can't jump into the Zoom app, but there's actually a link a donation page that was literally created during that zoom so anyone can donate and join and join in and we see this we see this all the time like we've done some great uh zoom fundraisers uh with folks like wikipedia and i'll give a great example kansas state this university incredible university the big 12 where literally they did an alumni event on zoom because hard to bring everyone to kansas right but they do a ton of zooms well they raise funds for a specific program on Zoom. And then afterwards, because it created that created that fundraiser page, they sent that out to everyone who couldn't who couldn't attend the Zoom and they all joined that same fundraiser. So it was a way for the nonprofit to to continue building momentum pre and post that Zoom. They also sent out the recording and then capture everyone who couldn't donate and join at that time. Great. We in this in a similar kind of vein, uh, we have Kathy asking if um you can, how is it embedded in Zoom? Can it be embedded in, say, a, con- a constant contact email blast out or a website? So can they take that URL and put it oh, in absolutely. an email campaign? Great. Okay. 
Yeah, you can use that email everywhere. You can use it on social media. You can put a link in bio on Instagram. You drop it in your constant contact. Okay, everywhere. so that yeah, and that's the same yeah. thing for Liali. Is this something you can use on a website? So yes, straight up, yeah. copy and paste that URL um, into your website. These are great yeah. questions, guys. I really love these questions. They're really thoughtful and very practical. Um, another question from Catalyze um, SV. I think this is Alex. Hey, Alex. Uh, do you see trends specific to Gen Z? Yep, absolutely. That is the recurring donor audience. Okay. So we launched two things. One, highly recommend with with gen z the subscription program because they want something that's unique and custom to them and this feeling of being a part of a club being part of a community that has like-minded and aligned around a mission really deeply resonates with that audience so that's why the recurring giving program is so important the second the second thing that we've seen a ton of is we launched a partnership with shopify several years ago where now any merchant on shopify can say, I want to donate a percentage of proceeds of a product being sold or add a roundup at checkout. Mm -hmm. um, and so as the world has shifted from malls and retail to online, this has driven huge dollars and huge donations and literally is the beginning of, you know, that Gen Z audience who's shopping from their phone. Um, it's the beginning of them sometimes being exposed to your mission is just that corporate partner, that cool Shopify brand that now they're like, oh my gosh, I bought this sweatshirt and it's help, helping support this nonprofit. Oh my God, that's amazing. Learn, I want to learn more. So um, if you have corporate partners that might have an e-commerce presence, a lot of times that we work really closely with St. Jude, who sends us e-commerce merchants who download this pledge app on Shopify, and it just literally generates new donations and younger younger donors being exposed to St. Jude. Great. Thank you, Alex, for that question. So I think we have time for one more quick question. And I think this will be great because we do have some folks from out of the country here. Um, this comes from Hugo Paleo. Um, Hugo would like to know, could you help foreign nonprofit organizations, for instance, Mexican organizations? And I know you have a great story about someone you just helped recently in Kenya. Yeah. So we do a ton of work internationally. Um, last, you know, a little over a year ago in Afghanistan, we ran some of the largest fundraisers, some of which started on Zoom and switched to online, where all the money we raised, all told, over five million dollars and helped evacuate over two thousand people safely during the fall of Afghanistan. And all that money went internationally to on the ground at you know Afghanistan nonprofits doing work there. So yes, we absolutely work with international nonprofits. Um, the the Kenya example that Nicole's referencing <clears throat> that was so powerful was one of the first Zoom webinars that we did. Where an executive director um, hopped on and explained the mission of her organization, and then a second Zoom screen popped up, and it took you to literally a community village and a farm where you could see as a donor your impact and where the funds were going so you could really feel your impact it's almost the promise of virtual reality but zoom has made this come to life um so happy to we ha happily support organizations around the world i'm not sure organization in mexico the only requirement for us is that the organization is equivalent to a us 501c3 because we're a us organization we have to make sure that when we deliver funds internationally that nonprofits either gone through um, er or ed certification and there's a number of organizations i know this is something holly and nicole deal with all the time when they're they're large organizations dispersing funds internationally but we have about 500 or so thousand nonprofits who've gone through that process we're constantly adding to them and so um feel free to you know, drop the organization in the chat, take a look on pledge. You may already be certified. And if not, we're happy to advise you on how you can use pledge internationally. So I know uh, before Aretha and TechSoup kick us out, um, <laughs> just want to say thank you to all of you who have joined. Um, I personally want to thank Holly for saying yes, for partnering with me. 
Thank you, James, for saying yes to be our guest and you and your pledge team. This is phenomenal. Um, to all those who we cannot answer your questions, please know we're going to be back for end of year giving. Um, we know that we could probably be here for another hour. So thank you so much to everybody who joined. Um, thank you, TechSoup, Aretha Bailey, uh, again, Ross Mayfield and your team. Uh, but ultimately, thank you for all of you all who registered, who came. We would not be here. We would not have jobs if it wasn't for you and you all who do the hard work. Uh, so thank you. Please keep it up. Um, Aretha, anything you would like to say before we officially end? Actually, I, have I would go, go, let Holly close it out. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole, for coming to me with this amazing idea. Thank you to James for all of the amazing information. Uh, we, I think, definitely will be back. I love the questions. I want to keep helping you guys. I did drop into the chat an info pack. If you sign up to this link here in the info uh, sorry, in the in the webinar chat, we will send you more information and we will be planning part two. So stay tuned. Thank you again for spending a whole hour of your day. I know you guys are busy and thank you to everyone. Thank you to TechSoup for hosting us. They do an amazing job of supporting our work. Thank you to Bailey. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. Thank you so much. James, thank do you, you want to say any so final? Much. Thank you, yeah, guys. I yeah, I just... Um, you said it, both of you said it so well, but we wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the incredible work that every single one of you are doing. We know the work of nonprofits is hard um, and it is so needed. It is so desperately needed. You're the heartbeat of the country and your communities um, everywhere in the world. We're so glad to serve you and support you and in every way we can. And thank you so much for TechSoup for rallying incredible community and Nicole and Holly are two absolute rock stars who um, are just doing incredible work. So thank you both for all the incredible work you're doing. And we hope every one of you has an incredible end of the year. And we're here to help however we can.